Oops, no, sorry. That's the next one. So that is slide number 43 now. You see it well. First, we should describe that we see normal follicular structure of thyroid gland, which is looking a little bit more loose because the follicles are a little separated from each other. It's also rich in lymphocytes here, right at the periphery. Also, we can see some lymphocytic populations here in between the follicles and something performing like a sort of an imaginary capsule here, which is suffering changes. There is hyperproduction either of polyps here, which is mixed with some inflammatory cells and carriages. Here again, we continue to the capsule to see whether other structures are changed. And when we go inside of this tumor, it's having a very specific look. Clearly, it appears to be well demarcated from these structures here. There is a follicle here formed. Now pay attention on this one with a germ center. So it would not be a mistake if you mentioned that there is beginning of development of lymphocytic thyroiditis at the periphery here, or perhaps next to this process developed the tumor one. Further, we again see cystically dilated follicles. What is this process here when the colloid is much and it pushes the cuboid to helium aside so it looks flat? How did we call this adaptation process? You remember from general pathology it was it's known as histological recommendation. That is what we should mention when the professor asks what this type of change means. What is most important of this slide anyway is not the benign changes now. We will focus on the malignancy. Multiple regions of hemorrhages here and there, a cystically dilated one, and a very strict papillary growth because it's seen as finger-like projections next to each other, mixed very regular one, covered both sided by cells, which are having a very strict look. Not much of eosinophilic cytoplasm, centrally positioned nucleus, which appears optically empty because the dispersed chromatin is concentrated next to the nuclear membrane. These are the follicular malignant tumor cells, and this is known as papillary thyroid carcinoma. The papillary thyroid carcinoma is having a very strict, well, when it's well differentiated papillary pattern, and the nuclei are appearing optically empty. What was the comics character? Who was the comics character to which we compared these look of the nuclei? Orphan Annie. Great. So that is what I wanted to know you to know for this type of tumor. Not much of lymphocytic population could be expected in the stroma of the papillary growth. And we should observe whether there is a capsule of this tumor and whether there is invasion, but we don't see a clear capsule between the normal parenchyma and the tumor itself. So I suggest that it's engaging lots of the parenchyma of the gland. Anyway, that's what we should mention about this one. 
uh, the professor here will ask you how many other types of thyroid tumors you know, and a short classification. Do you remember the most often types? Tell them to me. Count at least two other types of malignant tumors of the thyroid gland, which you should know for your exam. By the time that you're thinking or copying, I will share another slide. <laughs> so, did you remember which are the most often types of thyroid tumors which you should mention on your exam? Or did you Google them? Киношки Уилсон. А, да. Третья же киношки, четвертая дебетная фрусклемоз. Окей. Фолликулар. Another one. Папулар тироид we already mentioned. And another one which is very important. Medwary. Yes. Medwary type of carcinoma. Medwary thyroid carcinoma. Which one of these is neuroendocrine? Salt and pepper, manner of the nuclei, chromatin inside. Which one of these is neuroendocrine? Yes, great. So we now continue further with the 